Today on Películas with the Bros, we review the movie Knock at the Cabin, directed by M. Night Shyamalan, and we have hot takes like Shyamalan does it again, and M. Night Shyamalan is coasting. Sup, bro. Sup, bro. And welcome, everybody, to the show. This is Películas with the Bros. My name is Adrian. My name is Ivan. And Películas with the Bros is a show where me and my brother, Ivan, yeah. discuss a movie. Every week, we discuss a new movie. Ivan, what's the movie of the week? Knock at the Cabin. Knock at the Cabin. It's very hard for me to remember this t this movie's title. Because it sucks. Does it? It's just too plain. Yeah, it, it sounds like other movies, and I want to say Knock in the Cabin sometimes. And there's too many cabin horror movies. Yeah. Well, let's come on. Come on. Okay. Uh, but before we get into that, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Like I said, this is a show where me and my brother discuss a movie every week. We talk about a new movie. So if you're into that kind of thing where two guys, two brothers talk about movies, then you're in at, at the right place. Uh, you can find us on any podcast platform, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh Deezer, Stitcher, I don't know, wherever you listen to the podcast, we're there. We're also on YouTube, so if you like to watch us beautiful Mexicans talk, uh, go to YouTube and look us up, Pelicos with the Bros. Lastly, before we get into the movie Knock at the Cabin, let us know what you think about the movie Knock at the Cabin in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you... Uh, fuck it. It rhymed, so I did it. I don't know how our younger audience will feel about that. Shout out to our nieces. <laughs> Ivan, um, are you ready yeah. to make the hardest decision of your life? Sure. Don't do that while I'm recording because it makes a hideous sound. And now the podcast listeners out there are going to downgrade our five-star vote, five star vote to a four-star vote. I think they'll appreciate the realness of our jerry-rigged set. I think um, if we had like us eating into the mic... That adds nuance and texture to the quality. Not a, er, but debatable. Who but. knows? Uh, hardest decision of your life. Okay, you have to kill me, or you have to kill your dog. What are you gonna do? I'll flip a coin. <laughs> I'll take it. Ivan, what's the movie? Knock at the cabin. Yes, written. By M. Night Shyamalan, Steve Desmond, and Michael Sherman, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. The premise of this movie: a family of three are watching at a, or sorry, are vacationing at a remote cabin, but they are suddenly held hostage by four strangers who demand they sacrifice one of their own to avert the apocalypse. Ivan, with the cast of Dave Bautista as Leonard, Jonathan Graff, Groff as Eric. Ben Aldridge as Andrew, Nikki Anuk Amuka Bird as Sabrina, Kristen Q as Wen, um, Rupert Grint as Redmond. Ron Weasley. You were waiting for that. And Abby Quinn as Adrian. That's you. That's me. Shout out to Adrian. I've been M. Night Shyamalan. Before we get into the movie, let's talk about the director. His movies, uh, he's made many. A lot of you know him. Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, Signs. Whoa. The Village, what? Lady in the Water, <gasps> After Earth. You ever seen that movie? No. Split, Glass, and Old are his last three films up into this movie. Uh, we did a podcast on Old about a year and a half ago, whenever that movie came out. I think we kind of liked it. We're we're closer to liking it than we were to not liking it, I think, right? Yeah. Um, for you, in your... Uh, life in your short but sweet sweet beautiful life uh m9 shamalon what does he mean to you um um uh, do, do you care about his movies do you like his movies a bygone legend a bygone legend so when you when you're going to watch this film you already you're like oh this guy passes prime he might as well quit or is it more like i'll take what you got I think he's just at a point where he knows what he's doing, but he's never going to do anything like more now. Like, gotcha. Nothing groundbreaking. But as far as the films uh, that he's made, how have they impacted your life? Did you like them? Did you love it? I mean, did you hate them? Sixth Sense is pretty classic. Like, I I would want more of that, where it's kind of like there's a twist, but it's not like 
something wildly out of the the frame of what they're doing like old like the twist like oh go a mile that way there's actually a lab and this is an experiment sort of thing gotcha six cents it was like so you you're saying it's believable yeah some uh-huh. believable twist where you don't you could pick up on it if you looked not it was it wasn't hidden right um i mean yeah six cents it is a classic it is probably his best film and it's one of his earlier films he's it's kind of hard because like he's had this kind of uh reputation now as the director that makes almost like the same kind of formulaic movie not as far as the plot but like the uh, plot structure where everything is kind of uh thriller slash suspense slash horror and then there's a twist at the end um and it's tough when you make a really good film that and I guess for him it's even tougher cuz like if you're known as the guy that does twists everyone knows that something's coming right, right. but when you see Six Sense for the first time as a first time almost first time director it was like his third film you're going in blind so whatever happens it leaves a big impression on you right right so it's kind of hard to take that taste away of like Damn, the the newness of this was amazing, but now it's kind of getting either old or uh, not as fresh. Yes. Um, For me, I think he's made, like, a lot of movies. And I think, even though I haven't seen a lot of them, and the ones I have seen, I kind of liked, um, I feel like he is um, underrated. What dare you? Because he has, like, all these films. Mm-hmm. Half of them are success- successful financially. But underrated because they're kind of... Um, at least they're unique in the sense of, like, they're trying to do something with the... In a, telling a different kind of story. The plot is a little weird. There's, there's like, this tinge of horror, tinge of suspense, tinge of thriller. And they're always trying to do something, say something. Mm-hmm. And that in itself, it's... Because he's like considered an auteur in his own way. Right. And that is kind of taken lightly when people think about M. Night Shyamalan for some reason. And that's why I think he's underrated. Like I know his movies are sometimes not uh, the best. I think he's rated. Like right, right where he should be? Yeah. Like there was just that period where he lost everyone. And that yeah. just left a bad taste. But now people aren't. I, I I don't see people saying like, you still watch him. Like, what are you five sort of thing? Mm-hmm. Like it's either like, I mean, I watched it. Like I'm not gonna lose my mind over two or three bad movies he did. Yeah, I guess my point is more like, yeah, he probably shouldn't be up there with like the greatest auteurs ever. He's he, competent. He's competent. I think he's like a a great director who happened into being an auteur. I don't think he's not even auteur anymore. I think at the start he was, but now his is like, he reached his baseline sort of thing. Yeah. Cause uh, I think this is like the first film he had a hand in the screenplay mm-hmm. in over like 15 years or something. Oh wow. So, and his first films were more written by him. So I think, when you're thinking of auteur, you think of writer and director doing both parts and okay. a style. But he does have a style, right? I didn't see a style. I didn't see his style in this. Maybe small moments of corny dialogue, like those tiny tinge, of tiny corny tinges yeah. that he has sometimes. But But I think his style is his interest in the supernatural, his interest in like... uh kind of like this the other the this entity that right is always there um visually i can't really say i think i know he's kind of good at um framing and blocking but who knows um favorite m night Shyamalan movie uh six cents unbreakable signs the village in the water split glass old um probably split i don't think i think six cents is his best but it's kind of so overdone i'm not i'm not into it split was like 
I don't remember it being corny at all. And mm. it was kind of a neat premise. Yeah. It was just cool to see like that actor, James McAvoy, be able to flip like that. Yeah. In so many ways. That's a good pick. I like that pick. Uh for me, e- ooh. That's hard. I I probably would say Six Sense is his best film. But the one that sticks with me the most, yeah, Split was pretty good. Pretty good. It was it was interesting. Kind of graphic though, cuz it was like a sexual uh assault victims, right? Yeah. Um he also has like he's the He's like pre Jordan Peele. Okay. Because Jordan Peele kind of has that kind of. I think hopefully Peele keeps going on this route where he's kind of pushing away from the twist at the end type of thing. Mm-hmm. With and that he did that with Nope, I think. Uh, hopefully he keeps doing that. But I, I when I think of Shyamalan, I think of him and Peele in the same vein. People of color. Yeah, you know me. Uh, expectations for this movie knock at the cabin when you heard about it I like the premise like or I mean I just saw the trailer and then it was Dave Bautista saying like you have to make a choice one of you must kill another one we're sorry I was like okay I would like to see them explain I was more interested in seeing like the explanation yes like how it would work in real life like I was like okay convince me sort right, of thing right and it took a while for it to like wait wait, wait 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 we're talking about the expectations uh. so talk about the movie yet but that, so you were thinking about that when i saw the trailer i liked the trailer too but my problem is like if i felt like it uh showed too much and usually when movies uh when trailers do that i'm always like uh, i don't think the movie's gonna be that good if they're showing that much the same sort of went for like the menu when i saw the trailer for the menu i'm like i kind of feel like i know the whole movie already but um, the menu actually surprised me as far as like it actually it, I did know the whole movie, but the mm-hmm. execution was amazing. And I think it can the same thing can be said for this movie in a way. But my expectations were low. I'm just I, I don't know. Something was the the idea of like already knowing the entire premise kind of threw me off. But you're right. There was still something to be found out yep. for how this movie was made. I haven't here at Bilicos with the Bros. We like it to look at the sausage, rip it open, and see how the sausage was, was made for Knock at the Cabin. Let's figure it out. Based on a book called The Cabin at the End of the World. Better name. Uh, the plot diverges quite a bit, but premise and general idea is still there. Right. Uh, Bautista, <coughs> um, Shyamalan saw uh, Blade Runner. And he's like, hmm. who's this guy? <laughs> and when he was trying to this think guy. about uh, this movie, about who to cast, he couldn't think about anyone but Batista. Uh, that's kind of cool. It's shot on 35 millimeter film to give it that classic 90s thriller look. Sure. And it's his second R rating film of his uh, filmography for M. Night Shyamalan. Wow. The only other one is called The Happening. Never seen it, though. Um, kind of a waste. It wasn't really there's this gore moments but yeah i mean like if something's r rated I, I was thinking about this too though it, I, I seriously thought this was like pg-13 yeah and when i heard that i was like oh wow it is a, a waste but at the same time i like his decision of what he did and we'll talk about that in a bit ivan what did you think about knock at it's the good. cabin oh it's good it's good yeah it's a little classic. It's yes. Good. I liked it. Yeah. Um, to your point of it being a classic, I think that's kind of like my takeaway. It's like less than two hours, mm-hmm. digestible, not too confusing, straight like straight down the – like the right in your face. Oh. Yeah, right in your gut. Yeah. Here's a movie, uh, thriller, and I kind of feel like – it is a throwback to the 90s or even the 70s where films were just like films. Like, let's make a film and mm. let's make it good and let's get out of here. Um, That's just like what I felt after watching it. But yeah. as far as the movie, great acting, I think, mm-hmm. Um, from Bautista and the parents. Um, the pacing and the story are done well. Like, the way they have like some flashbacks 
and then the pacing making you feel like you want to figure out more what's happening and like divulging a certain amount of information at a time makes the movie work well um and yeah makes you it makes me feel a certain way <laughs> like you were saying it earlier how when you watch the trailer you wanted to know what happened you wanted to figure out like it can't be anything crazy it, the world isn't ending right like well, i'm gonna figure out what's going on here i assume that by the end one would die from the trailer yeah so i was like how are you going to convince these three people that they have one that's to die? Because I assume that's what's going to happen. Right. So I was like, how do you get from there to there without me being like, all right, come Interesting. on. So I was thinking like that these people that were uh, doing the hostage taking mm -hmm. uh, led by the four people, uh, led by Bautista, but it's four people. I thought they were just like crazy. Mm. And like they were seeing things, so I was like, "Yeah, they're they're gonna the parents and the the child are gonna prove those people wrong." I felt like that was too simple, like they when they called it like during the second killing, they they said like, "Oh, they're obviously just crazy." Like, right. Okay, then that's not what's going on because they wouldn't say that uh -huh. if if that's what was actually happening. Yeah, like it has to be more than that. Yeah. Yeah, it's good that it is more than that because the other way around, you're right. It is a little too simple, and it is more interesting to see if, like, they actually do have to kill one of them, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, the the thing that I, like, I've finally realized with Shyamalan's movie and this movie made me realize is, like, the act of, like, wanting to figure out what's going on is what makes me gravitate to his movies. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that I know that there might be a twist or that there is some kind of mystery makes me that much more intrigued into the film. Uh, make It makes me want to pay attention to see what's going on. Right. Um, and like the questions that I'm asking myself while watching it are like, why this family? Why mm -hmm. is this family being abducted? Why do these people think that by kill one of these people sacrificing themselves, mm. uh, it'll save the world, stop the apocalypse. Why are these people saying they have these visions? Right. Right. Like how does this all work? And all of this, all of these questions that I'm asking myself in the he my head are making me that much more invested in the movie. And I guess that's like a thing that he has in all, <laughs> all his movies. It's like, let me build in this thing. Yeah to hook the people in but is that cheating or is that just like good storytelling well, i think every story ever needs a hook like no one uh, otherwise it's just non-fiction or you can just have like ambiance like you just want to be in the setting i was just like oh it's a cabin well you might as well watch like a fireplace go off but that's true that's still a hook though if you're in a movie for ambiance, if you're in like if you're watching The Great Gatsby and you're like, oh, I just want to be in this world forever, mm -hmm. or if you're watching Once Upon a Time in the uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the the hook is like, don't you want to live in this like 1970s time? Not so much yeah. like what's going on with all these characters. Well, yeah, it could be like a million hooks, like the setting, the characters, Brad Pitt, Leo. Hollywood, Manson, like, oh, like, what's your reason to watch it? Right. Yeah, it's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is like a hangout mo movie. Yeah. You you watch it to hang out with all these characters. Um, I was going to say Batista. Let's talk about our boy. Uh, Batista Bum! Is that his, like, does he yell that out when he's going to do his move? I think, I don't think he does. I think an announcer does. <laughs> I think he does like the machine gun thing. Does he? Yeah. Oops. You're saying that you don't watch wrestling? <laughs> yeah. I watched um I I should have saved this for later, but I watched the Royal Rumble with uh, my wife and some of her family. And it was pretty fun. Mm. Because uh we made a game out of the actual Royal Rumble. You know how the Royal Rumble works? 
every like uh, minute a new contestant comes out mm-hmm. and there's going to be a total of 30 contestants. So theoretically, there can be 30 people in the ring at one time. Right. And the way you take someone out is by throwing them over the the ring. Yeah. The top uh, rope. And so they do a countdown, too. So like if a new uh, contestant's about to come out, 10 nine and it's a total surprise which is cool too because it's yeah. like the surprise is like oh they're coming out at 30 they're gonna win ronda rousey yeah or like if someone really good comes out early they're like oh they're not gonna win because like they don't have enough that's too much time for them to be in the ring mm-hmm. so we made it a game where it's we selected a random number and if we if the person that won at that random number won the rumble then the person takes home the money Okay. So I picked like uh, 24. Someone else picked like 17, 25, blah, blah, blah. Uh, short story long, no one won because we picked the wrong number. Right. Because there's 30 numbers and there's only yeah. six people. But it was fun because like you're rooting for your guy. <laughs> yeah. But you don't know who your guy is until they come out. So a lot of us pick like bozos. Like, oh, that person came yeah. out. So that was kind of shitty. Um but yeah, that's where we're going. <laughs> and it's fun. And don't you dare denigrate a beautiful pastime called wrestling. Um, Batista as Leonard in this is amazing. Can we just say it now? He's the best uh, wrestler turned actor of all time. Out of two. Out of three. Andre the Giant. Out of three and a half. Hulk Hogan. Out of four and a half. Rowdy Piper. Who the hell is that? <laughs> you don't know uh, Rowdy Piper? Come on, uh, man. Uh, John Cena, The Rock. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't know wrestling. The Big Show. He was in a movie. Um, Randy Orton. He was in a couple movies. But is that like the turned, Miz? He was like in three movies. Or is like, ooh, there's an acting opportunity. They were in whole movies. They were like the lead in but a I whole think movie. Turned actor is like Batista and Rock. Oh, you mean like a full conversion? Yes. Retired. Yes. Or like okay. mostly retired. Okay. So then there's only three. Yes. Cena. Yes. The Rock and Bautista. They all went different lanes. But I mean. Cena's still early in the game, though. Yeah. And The Rock, like, come on. You're going to compare against The Rock? Like, the, yeah, the why one not? Brave enough to do it, even if he kind of sucks now. So you're saying The Rock is better than Bautista? It's just hard to compare. Because they're they're different. As an actor, Bautista. That's what we're comparing. Who's the All best? Right. Who's the best actor that used to be a wrestler? Hmm. Cena. You Black Adam Stan. Cena could act, but he does comedies. It's ca- it's actually a trick question because I think long tail, Cena wins. Okay. Long tail means like in long twenty term? years. Long yeah. term. Yeah. <laughs> long tail. It's a long tail. Okay. It's a term, Ivan. Get come on, get smart. Read some books. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you're gonna read some books, right? Yeah. Okay, good. And then you're gonna learn long tail. And then you're gonna come back and you're like, okay, long tail. Yeah. Okay. The long tail uh, success of yes. Gina, uh, a Gina's career, not Cena's, yes. Gina's career of Cena's career is, I think, like, if you put money into that stock, you're gonna make more money than the Batista stock. Yeah. I think he has a little bit more. Actually, I don't know if he has more range. Batista is oddly... I think he'll be a better rock than the rock long term. But <sighs> Batista is the first wrestler who turned like serious actor. Yeah. He's They're in different cool. lanes, but still in the acting world. Batista in this film does what you would not... Ex- like, it's just so crazy how his career has gone. He's huge. He's a big guy. He stands like that. He's a triangle. Yeah, it's crazy. When he was in, when he was a wrestler, like he was so aggro, and to see him perform this like almost gentle giant role, like this big old menacing teddy bear, yeah, is amazing. Uh, just like the subtleness that he delivers his lines, like his believability of this guy that's like, like I said, a teddy bear, but. He also can kill you at the same time. Right. It's great. Um, what was I going to say? 
and his dialogue. You're right. M. Night Shyamalan doesn't have the best dialogue, but I think like the the basicness of uh, Leonard slash Batista's dialogue in this is like perfect. I was thinking more like the placement of certain things said. Like there's like the the white girl. She made like a joke a little bit too early, like as they're pretty much thinking they're about to get killed. What would she say? I don't remember. It was just like, really? Oh. Was this the time? Gotcha. Like, in real life, it wouldn't have happened, uh-huh. sort of thing. I think if they waited a little until they're like, let's humanize them because we need to, that's when you could put that little bit of a joke. Mm-hmm. But it was just, it was like wrong placement. Gotcha. Not like badly said. For me, Bautista, when he first meets that uh, the daughter, the little girl, and he's like, I'm a stranger, but I want to be your friend. Like, his words were so sincere, and his delivery was so sincere. And yes, it was, like, super basic, like, uh, can we talk? And the more we talk, we'll be friends. Like, just basic dialogue. But the way it was delivered, it was just so, like, chef's kiss. Because he says it to a kid. Like, they wrote it so it would be said to a kid. Yes. Like, and it would convince a kid. Right. And he has to say it, like, the kid's an idiot. Because technically, kids are idiots. But how he delivered it, he knew that he had to say it like an idiot. Yeah. But even though he wasn't like, oh, can I be your friend? Like, he wasn't <laughs> menacing Barney. like that, you know? Yeah. He wasn't like a sadistic. Like, usually this is played like the guy is sadistic, right? And yeah. he's like, I'd love to be your friend. Right. But he's like, honest. And he's like, I want to be your friend. Yeah. What's going to happen? And in an hour you might hate me but please know that i I just want to be your friend beautiful loved it and that's also directing too like cena takes and that's the good thing about cena too i mean cena sorry batista batista Mm -hmm. takes his uh orders from the director right when you say the line say it like this right and compliments to both Shyamalan for saying that and uh batista for being like receiving that and doing it right right good on them um the dads the dads are really good too it was kind of funny how they made a point to make sure people knew it wasn't a homophobic movie yeah it was like i i know you who you're talking to sort of thing what do you mean because they they said like i know why you're here this Mm. is a hate crime right because there's like a lot of tropes where oh like the gay guy dies or something like that yeah and i think Shyamalan saw that and like okay i have to address it otherwise people are gonna say another movie where the gay couple is killed just because they're gay Hmm. i know what you mean but i think how should i say this i don't think that was in his head i think like the fact that the couple is gay adds that layer of mystery or like of like are they doing it because they're gay and it's another thing he can play with right but i don't think he's trying to be like woke by not killing them outright no i I mean like the the twitter dummies would see that if they didn't include that bit of him explaining like no i didn't even know you're this like they would latch on to that and say well obviously this is some sort of cathartic hate crime yeah sort of thing yeah but it's also helpful as far as the plot goes that like they were gonna kill whoever was in they were gonna offer the ultimatum of one of them has to die mm-hmm. whether they were straight gay two monkeys it could have mm-hmm. been three monkeys in there and they would have told the chimpanzees hey i know you don't understand understand me but you guys have to die one of you have to, has to die and they're like ah, ah. <laughs> and he's like well sorry to tell you but you got to do it um yeah that part too it, i think it makes it more modern like a more modern i know that i was saying earlier this feels like a classic film one that could have been made in the 70s but mm-hmm. this probably is something uniquely modern where it's gay. a gay couple oh. and not o- only are they gay they have a uh, Asian daughter, right? With a cleft palate. Yeah, it's like all the things. All the red flags, all all in one. Yeah, 
the all the things that makes Ivan want to leave a party. <sighs> Clef, I'm out of this party. Gay, okay? I'm out of this party. <laughs> what was the other one? Uh, Batista. Ah, oh, I'm actually staying at this party. <laughs> That's Ginger, a party. I'm out. Who? Ron Weasley. Ron Weasley. I'm in. Oh, out. Um, not sure. Oh, movies are rated. The uh, there's things that happen in this movie. We won't spoil it. That uh, they could have showed more, right? They could have made it a little bit more graphic, but they don't. And I think that adds to the quality of the film rather than taking it away. I would want something for like the R-rated thing. But take away that. Like you don't even know. You didn't even know it was R-rated until right now. Yeah. Do you think if you saw something more graphic, you would have liked the movie better? But if I'm like just from a marketing point of view, they should have just done PG-13. Right. No blood and then just like. Really sell the, <laughs> but that's never been Shamlon Stilo. He's always a guy that's like kind of. But in the with last that. movie, it was there's points where I was like, Ugh. but in this one, like I wasn't. Like, I guess that's blood. Yeah. There's like a point where it's like CGI blood, obviously. Yeah. It's like what the. Well. Yeah, I guess like my rebuttal was like I think the movie is perfect without showing more. Right. I think it actually adds that it doesn't show so But stuff. like I would want like a very split second showing of like the hatchet going in. Like the smallest fraction where it's like <laughs> cut. And like you can't even you can barely even see what's happening, but you know like it was landed and you could almost see like some split or something. Yeah, okay, I'll take that. I like that. And that's even like holy That reminds me of like hereditary for some reason. Yeah, yeah. And that would be good. Yeah. And it will be rated R and you don't have to like a million dollar CGI. It just one frame. Or just kill someone. Could be. Could be. Who would you kill? First. I don't want to get racist or anything, but the white guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, how many people need to die before? I'm convinced. Yeah. None. Because... <laughs> They base the the premise again is the family has to uh, choose one of them to die, one of the family members to die, or else the apocalypse is gonna start happening. Mm-hmm. And the family takes a while to choose. <laughs> a lot of people have to die before they choose. Yeah. So you're saying someone's gonna die? When they knocked, I would have been like, "Who do, who I do I gotta you want? <laughs> <laughs> you want the girl? <laughs> Take her. She's yours." I think that's something that uh, Shyamalan is focusing on, also probably the book, like this idea of like faith. Mm -hmm. Like, do you have, do you believe these people? And if you don't, then a lot of people are going to die. If you do, um, not that many people have to die, but you have to kill one of your own, which is kind of like the worst thing either way. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's interesting. It's a very like, um, was it like a psychological test? Like, how many pe- how many millions of people need to die before you kill your your wife or your husband or yeah. stuff? Um, the movie also delves into conspiracy theory territory, right? Because like the idea that one of the characters has in this film is that these people doing the hostage taking are part of like a conspiracy theory that like, mm-hmm. oh, are you killing us? Are you doing this because you believe in some kind of crazy QAnon thing? And that also makes it modern, you know? Like this modernizing this film that's also already almost like a classic in itself, not in terms of rating, but just like in the way it's told. Yep. I like that. Um, I already said the gay couple, <laughs> thinking that it, it, there, it might be a hate crime. Um, just makes it different. Makes it unique. Uh, uh, yeah, that is a tough thing. the The struggle of the parents, just like protecting their daughter mm. when they can't, and it makes you think like, should I get a gun? <laughs> should I have a, a backup plan if someone breaks into my house? Right. 
that house, like when they started uh, trying to stop everyone from uh, barging in. Yeah. There's so many. Like I started thinking, like, oh, there's so many windows. You you can't stop them. Yeah. God. That's when that's when it would be help to be like a marine specialist, <laughs> just knowing how to murk someone with like one bullet. Right. I know my name is Tony Montana. You killed my father. Prepare to die. I know that's like three different movies I just did right there, but take it. I don't know. Um, which way would you die if the apocalypse is happening? Would you take uh, the tsunami? You're on shore and the tsunami's coming. 50 foot tsunami. Take mm. it like that. Would you take a uh, airplane? Going down, yeah. nosedive. Would you take uh, burning alive somehow? I don't know. Take your poison. And fourth, uh, respiratory infection causing um, choking. I think plane just because I feel like that's the best chance I'll have to get like my name on a plaque when they do a sort of like commemoration thing. Because tsunami, that's going to like millions millions like we can't make a plaque this big but if it's like 600 planes like i think that's a reasonable amount to make like in memory of ivan like, interesting yes. so breaking you down like a psychologist is what i'm gonna do you don't even think about like the amount of pain that's gonna happen you don't think about like the moment that you're dying like are you how scared you're gonna be you think about how you're gonna be remembered yeah, I mean, and, and the more likely you are to be remembered, that's the way you'll take dying. Like, if I know I'm gonna die, the next question is like, how much pain do I want to go through? Uh -huh. Plain, that's like instant, like no pain. There will be a lot of fear, but lots of fear. Yeah, but arguably the most. But I think I could find a little peace in that fear. Okay. Somehow, if not, like it, it would be the coolest way to go. Imagine coolest. Coolest. How? I don't know, like, oh, he was part of the 600 planes that fell. Like, that's pretty cool. Oh, and then they'll call you the 600s. Like, he was one of the 600. <laughs> what the I just went to Cabo for a work trip. Shout out to my work. And uh, we have, like, a bunch of new employees that we haven't met. <laughs> okay. And it's funny because a lot of them are Mexican, and they were saying that uh, they have, like, their own channel in Slack uh -huh. where they talk to amongst each other. Segregation. Segregation at its finest. And uh, they were saying that they call me and other like other coworkers that are older. And it's about like 10 or 12 or something. The originals. <laughs> and I was like, damn. You were like, yes, I am one of them. I need like something in my life. A shirt, a plaque, a badge that says the originals. The originals. Or make a movie out of us. Uh, the Eternals. Oh, <laughs> and our boss is like that big monolith. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Um, so you take plane, huh? Um, you kind of sold me on that because it is instant death. Tsunami might be instant death too. I'm scared I would survive it well enough for like a couple minutes, and I'm just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good uh, reaction right there. But like, I think that would be second because I feel like. In the back of my head, I think I would survive. Like, I would see it and be like, let's go. And, like, run towards it. Yeah. And just, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then just dive up. Even though I'm the, I don't know how to swim. <laughs> like a fish swimming to the top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing dolphin noises. <laughs> and I get to the top. Not more. Oh. I kind of was leaning toward respi respiratory because, like, my idea is that I'll be well taken care of. Like in my final moments. I don't want that because I would know there would be loved ones around me. I don't want them. But that's the, exactly why I want it too. I don't. I would rather they like just. Not see it. No, nah, like. Nah. Not to suffer. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I'm into it. All right. We'll go down in a plane together. Um, Shyamalan movies, Ivan. Do you want more? I mean, I'll, I'll watch them. I want more if they're like this. I think he kind of, with Glass, he went ambitious again. And they got, it got sort of complicated and a little messy. Yeah. He was good on old, but old was kind of like 
create he tried to get a little bit ambitious too this movie is more like give me more of these yeah like not too much just he just needs to take his time and not worry about like oh i need to make this the one yeah this has to be the seventh sense at least right and don't get like a get a keep doing this source material yeah like get someone to make to make the idea you come up and do your finishing touches mm. Uh, I would have a review for you, but I actually forgot to print out the Thank review. Thank God. I hate critics. Uh, I read... The two that I read actually were kind of like... You don't even deserve to be re- uh, read out loud. I didn't respect it enough. Wow. And it was for the good and for the bad, so let's <laughs> take it for you. What? Uh, Ivan, let's rate this film. Wait, I have a tiny story. I was trying to think of a better word. Love it. Give me your story. Okay, you know how in the movie there's the the boogie boogie shoe song that plays at the start. Let's let's try to sing it. I don't remember how it goes. I could play it. Yeah. Want to play it? Yeah, I need it. I haven't liked. That's how much it means to me. I'm on up put on boogie shoes. Cut it. Oh. Okay. Uh, I felt like at the end that was a little cheesy, but I kind of like the like the message behind that. Yeah. Like, how about just live in that love, happiness, yeah. even if something tragic is happening. But what spooked me was before I went to the theater. I ha- I was listening to that song, but I didn't realize it was that song until like I left it. So I, I just, I didn't press that song at all. It was just a radio. First I played Crazy by Miles Barkley and there's a radio station off of gotcha. that. Gotcha. Uh-huh. So it was, it was random as can be. Yeah. And it was like the fourth song from yep. Crazy and it was playing. I for- I didn't realize it was that song. Yep. And then movie ended, go back in the car, turn it on. Dun. Dun. Like what the wow? What the heck? Like the insane coincidence for that to happen? Like I was just like, no, what? Like I've never had such a big coincidence in my life. I would have been scared. I was a little scared. I was like, was it nighttime? Yeah. God. Did you look over and see? Try to see if there's like a little Asian girl next to you. Yeah, and I threw it out. (laughs) Hey, what are you doing out here? Get, out Get here. that cleft palate out of here. <laughs> I've been out of five um, cabins. Out of five cabins in the woods. How many f- cabins is this film? Give it four. Me too. Four or five. Yeah. Good movie. Yeah. Next week, we got Magic Mike's Last Dance. <laughs> I watched the first one a couple weeks ago. Did you like it? Yeah surprisingly solid i know it's i know it's solid obviously because the reviews and all that and obviously they're making a third film but I, it's steven soderbergh yeah like the guy that can do anything i didn't watch i'm not i'm not gonna watch the second because he didn't do it and i heard it's not he didn't do it i'm pretty sure he didn't do it interesting but i read the synopsis so i'm good i think i might need to watch at least one of them the first one, it's good. Like it's just a good movie. I think it just has that weird fan base. The best fan. Base. <laughs> but I think the and fan guess base what? Huh? we're part of their oh. fan base now too. Uh, Channing Tatum, quick take, go. Um, funny, honest, cool, real. Okay. My quick take, hottie with the sexy body. Come on, man. Come <laughs> on, man. Uh, all right. Now it's time for a section called Things and Such. Anything for you? No. Um, NBA tread deadline. Lakers traded Russell Westbrook. Heard that was an upset. Can't believe they took that. They just stole that. They just <laughs> stole that. They stole that and nobody cares, Adrian. Yeah. Isn't that just crazy? I love p- people that do that. The like, they have no idea what they're talking about. Am I wrong? Did they steal that? Like, Lakers stole that? It's like, there's a golden goose, 
And then they're like, I'll just take that. And there's police all around. And they're like, all right. And they, the police don't do anything. No, it wasn't like that at all. Okay. <laughs> if they got an, a bigger player, I would have said that, but no. Okay. But good good try. I like that the commitment to the the acting. It'll keep happening. Yeah. Uh remember Kyrie Irving, that player? Yeah. The anti Semitic stuff? Yep. He got traded. We Lakers were trying to get him. I kinda wanted him, but <laughs> after I was like, Yeah, he's anti Semitic. I don't want him. So All it shows right. how like uh sports are pretty evil. Yes. Uh, enough about that. Disney is doing their round of layoffs. The next big company to do it. Uh, big news out of that though for us is that they're cutting a lot of stuff for uh, movies and TV shows, and they're uh rever- rerouting that money towards classic IP. So guess what we're getting? Remakes. Toy Story Five. Jesus. What? 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 It just it's just sad. Like, can Pixar just breathe? Is Toy Story all they have, really? It's kind of crazy because I think the Pixar brand, ha- like, it has to kind of die. Like, once you make, how should I say this? No, they kind of screwed themselves. They got too big. I mean, I think. Because they have to give, like, every director a chance. Yeah. And then that's where they screwed up. And not every director is going to be good. I think at this point, Pixar doesn't really even have to be involved. Like, if they're making Pixar do five, I think that's kind of dumb. Oh, you're saying, like, outsource that? Yeah. Like, get China to make it? There's four movies done by Pixar. Like, how about you just use that? Like, kids don't care about that Pixar. tiny little do, graphical. Do, 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 do. Ding, ding, ding. Right? <laughs> Kids don't care about because Pixar's thing is that, like they always go like they push um, animation forward like with each movie like just and a bit and like um, the story is hard hitting. Yeah, but I think anyone can do that. It's just like a good writer. Like, does Pixar have the monopoly on uh, kids movies? Kids movie writers who have adult tinges. Like, Obviously not. All right. <laughs> Sorry, you're getting me. I'm getting mad. But um, if it's five, how about outsource it to DreamWorks or something? Ooh. And then like, hey, just make Woody look like Woody. That's all you got to do. I think. Ooh, I don't know. I think this is gonna be a good movie, Toy Probably, Story Five. But. But the fact that only classic IP is working is. A sign. Demoralizing. Yeah. Uh, but if that's what the Igers thinks, I mean, he's never been wrong, has he? Hmm? <laughs> Air, the trailer for the new movie directed by Ben Affleck starring Matt Damon and Ben Affleck about the come up of Jordan? Nike oh. and Jordan's involvement in it. The trailer just arrived today. Oh, I didn't watch it. It looks decent. It, it looks funny? like it's going to what? Funny. Uh, there's funny moments, Ooh. but it looks like a just like a success story with funny moments, drama. And all that. I love me biopics, so I'll be there. Yeah, it's gonna be like that thing where you're like, I I can just see it. You're gonna come in in here, and you're like, I just never realized how important Jordan was. Like now I understand, and now I'm gonna start wearing Air Jordans, and then you're gonna be like. You're gonna be like all oh, Air Jordan now, and I'll be like, Wow, Ivan is your new. You Elvis. know, I won't. Because I do not agree with Mr. Jordan himself. Why? Because I don't like him. What do you do? I don't like his, his um, how he carries himself around people. The stories I've heard. Ooh. I don't like that. I don't like that. You think Elvis was a good guy around the people? Uh, better. I know <laughs> he had his demons. <laughs> <laughs> um, you people, that movie on Netflix that you probably were avoiding. Oh, I want to watch it, but. Not too much. Funny. Something always seen like since the trailer came out, I was like, no, I don't want to see this. Oh. And I didn't watch it. Um, I almost clicked on it, but I saw like the preview in Netflix. I was like, no, definitely don't want to watch it now. All right. Controversy right now going on that like, I guess it's controversy. It's not really controversy, but like they're saying Jonah Hill and uh, Lauren London are not believable as a couple. That's controversy. 
it's not controversy, but it's what they're talking about on the internet. Okay. Um, and they're saying that, um, yeah, that just like the the movie doesn't make it feel believable. Okay. And today it came out that the there's like a kiss in the movie between them two, like the only kiss, and that was CGI'd. What's going on? And it made me <laughs> like think like you can't you can't have a peck. <laughs> Let's peck Ivan. <laughs> it just if you're gonna make a movie I don't care if you don't kiss, obviously. But if you're gonna make a movie, make it good. And you have Jonah Hill, like use them. You have Eddie Murphy and Joni, Jonah Hill in a movie and they're saying the movie's not good. Like sounds like it was more the girl's problem. Who? Laura London? Yeah, I don't even know what she looks like. No, you're just doing that manimism thing again. Or in London, that's Nipsey Hussle's ex, because he passed away. Widow, I should say. I shouldn't say ex. Is she? What's her deal? What's she was a she's an actress. What's her What's her claim to fame? ATL, what's the that? Great American Flick. ATL starring Ti. ATL, ATL. That was a great movie. Okay, you're taking too long. How long? Two thousand six. Great movie. That was like 30 years ago. What's your point? I mean, I don't know why they were... They should have done chemistry tests first. Well, what I'm saying is like, not even Eddie Murphy's good in it. But you haven't watched it. I know. I know. Did the review say it was... Yeah, they said it's like, meh. Okay. How are you going to have two all-stars deliver a meh movie? All right. Bullshit. <laughs> Ivan, it's time for a section called What's on the Telly? Well, well, well. Well, I got a woman. Well, of a time that digs on me. <laughs> Give me money. I didn't say she's a gold. Okay. Um, I saw, and you're going to be jealous. Jelly? You're going to be peanut butter and jelly. I saw raspberry jelly or strawberry jelly or grape jelly. Fig. Oof, that's a thick jelly. That's so that, imagine fig with peanut butter just uh, just I chewing for days. I only need that. Okay, go. Lawrence of Arabia. Son of a bitch. I told you, fig jelly. Ugh. I saw that like was it HBO Max. Yeah. I saw that. And I, I wanted to offer that as like a movie night to my wife. And I was like, she is not going <laughs> to she's not going to finish 10 minutes of this before falling asleep. How was it? Four hours. <laughs> Four dang hours. <laughs> it's definitely an epic as it's sold. <laughs> they it's did good. not lie. It's good. Like it was long, but I, I didn't feel like I was dying. Uh-huh. There's just there's shots where it's like, if I saw that in theater, I'll be like, dang, right? It's and it's like, um, <laughs> a skyline of the desert, but like, cut right in the middle is the desert part, uh-huh. and you just see like right before sunrise, so it's just that glow, yeah, and then you see the tiniest little fleck of the sun start rising. It's like super slow, and that's like a five minute shot. So you're like, <laughs> wow, like if I saw that. In a theater, that must have that must be crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, but other than that, it was pretty good. Like it was just the plot is it's kind of like white savior sort of thing. Yeah, but it actually happened, so it's like, is it? It, it doesn't count. Mm-hmm. It's real. It's real. Um, I don't know. It's cool. Um, questions. Epic. We talk about epics. What was the movie where we we're like? This movie is an epic. Is it Babylon? No, uh, Spartacus. No, I think it was Babylon. It, it, yeah, Spartacus. But I think like we were saying that this movie is like an epic because it's like long and I think it was Babylon. But I think epic is it just traveled a lot in the movie. Like there's a lot of a lot of traveling, and it just like. We have to travel through the desert. No one's ever traveled through. And Lawrence of Arabia is like, no one's ever traveled through yet. 
and then they go through it. Like, you did it. Imagine, like, that's all you need to convince, like, you never thought about saying the word yet after yeah. your sentence. But to convince the masses, all you needed was, like, that leader that just says, we haven't done it yet. Oh. Everyone's like, <gasps> no. Audible gasp. That's good. It's a good movie. Good acting? Or was did it feel antiquated? Uh, no, it was good. Okay. Uh, Lawrence, he's a he's a character, like, but I think that's the point. Right. Like, he's a little showy, flamboyant, showy. Gotcha. It's like, oh my god, guys, we haven't done Not it yet. Not like that. Oh. Jesus. That'd have been good. But I don't know. It's good. Okay. But it's four hours. But you you like that four hours? Yeah. Four to five. I don't know. I don't know, Adrian. Closer to five out of five, isn't it? Yeah. I would want to see it in theaters, though. But I don't know what theater would show a four-hour movie. The one we're going to build. <laughs> wow. Coming to you in theater of the year. Oh, no. Uh, Ivan, what? watched Last of Us? Oh, yeah, I did. It's good, right? Yeah, this is more like an in-between episode, I oh. felt. But yeah, a lot of like, uh, like who's Henry? Like who's this guy? Mm-hmm. And then I'm sure they're gonna explain in the next episode. There, I think sometimes the dialogue's a little like, all right, relax. Like it's a little corny, mm-hmm. but like the parts they nail are, like the, the real, like human and human. Yeah, when they're killing that kid, it's like no, no, no. I have a mom. Get my mom. She'll she'll fix this. Yeah. You want? Here's my knife. It's a good knife. Like, and they're begging, and you know, like, he has to kill him, sort of thing. And the whole time, you're like, dang. Because in, in movies, it's always like, they don't, like, this just felt more realistic to what someone begging for their life would look like. Right. My wife laughed out loud when he <laughs> squealed. Wee! <laughs> <laughs> she, she was like, looking at me laughing. I was just like, like, mm-hmm. don't, this man's dying. <laughs> She's like, he sounds like a girl. Oh my god! <laughs> and I was like, okay, point taken. Uh, haven't watched anything else other than that. What's Training Day? Hmm. Denzel. Mm-hmm. Ethan Hawke. Never watched it before. Pretty classic movie. Denzel. What a what performance! A, what an actor! <laughs> what an actor! Has a future. Ahead of him, I would Indeed. say. Indeed. I, I want to watch, like, all of his movies. I don't... I, he's underrated in my head. Yeah. Because, like, the charisma he had in that movie was, like, Jesus. How how do you have that? Sort yeah. Of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he did... Just, like the, like, the bravado. Yeah, like, ha, huh, really? Sort of thing. Yeah. And it's, it's, like, bravado that is so evil. Yeah. I watched uh, the French Dispatch, the first hour of it. You never watched it? No, no, sorry, not the French Dispatch. Sorry, I wanted to watch his other movie before that. Um, Hotel Transylvania. I want to say that, but I wasn't gonna say that. <laughs> Hotel. Hotel Hell. Do you know what it's called? Damn it! Grand Budapest. Grand Budapest. <laughs> Grand Budapest. <laughs> Grand Budapest. <laughs> Grand Budapest Hotel. It was good. The first hour. I, I fell asleep because it was late. <laughs> and I then I didn't have a chance to finish it. And I, I will finish it. But I love, like, the the uniqueness of his characters. Mm-hmm. Just, like, uh, very peculiar. It was idiosyncratic. Bit odd. And, uh, yeah, funny. It's a good movie. And obviously, like, the look of it is... It is what you're, cu- you're signing up for. I saw like a. Tr- uh, I didn't know he did this, but Wes Anderson made like um. Uh, a commercial for, uh, like Gucci or something, like ten years ago or whatever, and it's starring that guy that's always in all his films with the slick back hair, like very thick black hair, and he's like this uh, race car driver in the like thirties, and it's just so funny because like he goes into. His car breaks down in, in like a little small village, mm-hmm. and then he he talks 
to all the villagers like he owns a place and like they're all enthralled by him and he's like oh come on guys and it's just i love his characters they're so oh. idiosyncratic for gucci gucci or some kind of fashion brand okay. but it doesn't have anything to do with like the fashion they yeah, just, just hired him to make they gave him money and like do whatever you want do it put gucci at the end yeah gotcha <laughs> uh all right evan anything else that you watched no it's time for a section called really be bussin <laughs> listen to anything any kind of music you've been liking just podcasts. Any good podcasts you could recommend to your boy? Ever heard of? No, it's not like that. Andrew Andrew Huberman or something. Yes, I I, was, I watched listened to his most recent one mm-hmm. about like meditation and what it does to the brain. It's pretty. He's a smart fella. Yeah. Not a fart smeller. That's for sure. Yeah, big guy and smart. The ultimate man. Yeah. I think, like I'm, I'm starting to find my podcast groove, and it's either like funny or just violently informative. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I hate those podcasts where like you have to listen to it. I used to love them, but where you have to listen to them three times to understand like what the hell's going on. I because um, they're giving you like data, yeah. like straight <laughs> hardcore data, and you're like, oh god, oh god. Yeah, How much hours do, do I need to sleep? How many milligrams of protein per body weight do I need to eat? But I love it. <laughs> like, give it all. To, I feel like I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> You're like absorbing it, turning it into a tiny little cube. A little diamond of nugget knowledge. Just poop it out, then eat it again. Uh, and then it comes out even smaller and more compact. <laughs> and I eat it again, like, more smaller. Compact, eat it Till you can finally like just insert it into a follicle. Just like an atom <laughs> of distilled knowledge that I just blink. <laughs> boom. <laughs> or like in my head. So like it's vision. Yes. Um, but I listened to it on the drive up to LA and back. Oh, okay. So it was like I didn't even finish it. That's how <laughs> it's like four hours the podcast. Jesus. But the whole time I was just like I was like in the podcast. Yeah. Just because there's nothing else to do yes. when you're driving. So I was just like, <laughs> just, yeah. Like, I, I think I, I had a little headache by the end. Nice. Just like tension yep. of driving in LA and then trying to not lose my focus. Mm-hmm. There's moments where I would like pause just like to rest. Or like when there's that ad, I was like, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> of, I could breathe, <laughs> sort of thing. Uh. It was good. I actually listened to, I forgot, th- this was a while ago. Uh, remember that comedian I recommended to you? Shane Gillis. Shane Gillis. He has a podcast, obviously. But he has this, he, he did four podcasts with Louis C.K. Mm-hmm. Where they just talk about all the presidents of the United States of America. Okay. From one to Trump. Okay. Or to Biden, I should say. It was very, very good. Informative? Informative and funny mm-hmm. like and it made me want to like learn about our presidents because mm. they take like uh they they talk about them as characters mm-hmm. they like objectively they're all evil people right but I, we don't care about that we just want to talk about like the craziness that they did and how they were and they go through one through 50 mm-hmm. and they have like information like they they're historian buffs so they know a lot really yeah hmm. it's crazy I, I wouldn't expect it but they're like george washington he was like this this and this and he would do this and this and then all the way up and then there would be like middle presidents where they're like these all suck like <laughs> they're kind of boring yeah it's just very good highly recommended i like funny and i like knowledge do get uh shane gillis and then p- put louis ck presidents and mm. it's like parts one through four is it like a separate little mini series yeah, but he never says it. He's just oh. like, we're going to talk about presidents. <laughs> and he's like the type of guy that doesn't like branding. He'll mm-hmm. be like, all right, we're going to talk about presidents. There's no like lead up to anything. There's mm-hmm. like, all right, go. George Washington. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, that's it. Music, I didn't listen to anything. I don't think anything of note was released. There's the Grammys. 
Oh, I guess we should have. I saw uh, mentioned that. Uh, it was not. This is like a s- statistic, but it said like the third year in a row where this is the least watched Grammy ever. They Makes even sense. put they put video game awards in there. Like that's how you know it's bad. Eesh. I think the game awards are bigger than the Grammys actually. So Kendrick won best rap album. All right. I think he b- beat out like Pusha T. Was he so. there? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, best It'd be funny if like none of them even go anymore. Best dance album was to Beyonce for her album, but the best album went to Harry Styles for his album. Heard that. Did you listen to his albums? I think I listened to this one, but I don't remember. They're they're decent. Like, uh, yeah. they're not bad. Like, they're not like the typical pop album that you would think. They're pretty, like rock, psych rock, uh, I mean, alternative I, rock. After Don't Worry Darling, he's on my like Blacklist. Michael Jordan list. Uh of like I like, I don't want I don't care about you. Oh, gotcha. like, you you're not good. Gotcha. Well, I would say he's since he was on that and the drama wasn't well, it was kinda of about him, huh? I mean he had a choice to not get with the director. Of, yeah. Like he could have made the whole But who thing. can say no to Olivia Wilde, Ivan? Uh her ex husband. <laughs> what if it was like what if this whole time what if harry styles is like you know how women used to get taken advantage of by like the director that's like used to if you want to be in this film you have to sleep with me and that happened to him? what if this is his version you're telling me multiple platinum diamond artist harry styles was coerced into this he had to for his career for his career the same one who starred in Dunkirk, directed by Christopher Nolan. You know what Nolan tried to do to Harry Styles? Yep, you guessed it. Don't even say it out loud, because, you oh, know, Nolan. Dunkirk, it's going to happen to this house right now if we talk about it. Dunkirk, amazing movie, by the way. I didn't like it. Damn. Sometimes I wonder how we are brothers. Blood. Gotcha. Only. <laughs> I haven't any party words before we leave. Nope. Well, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We'll be back next week with, with Magic Mike's Last Dance. Probably going to be amazing. And last dance. The last dance tonight. Peace out. Bye.